والذين تبوأوا الدار والإيمان من قبلهم يحبون من هاجر إليهم ولا يجدون في صدورهم حاجة مما أوتوا ويؤثرون على أنفسهم ولو كان بهم خصاصة ومن يوق شح نفسه فأولئك هم المفلحون Assalamu alaikum and welcome to another episode of the Quranic Seerah. In the previous episode, we spoke about the migration of the Prophet ﷺ from Mecca to Medina, also known as the Hijrah. The Hijrah is a very significant event in the life of the Prophet ﷺ and our lives also, because the Hijrah marks the start of the Islamic calendar. And going forward, we'll be using the Hijrah date. So this is the first year after the Hijrah. The Prophet ﷺ on his way to Medina, he stops by a small town in the outskirts of Medina known as Quba. He stays there for a few nights, and whilst he's here, he establishes the foundations of the very first masjid in Islam, known as Masjid al-Quba. And Allah makes mention of this masjid in the Quran. He says, "La masjidun usisa la taqwa min awwali yawmin haqqu an taquma fi fihi rijalu yuhibun yatatahiru wa Allah yuhibul mutahhirin." Allah says, "In this masjid, there are men who love to purify themselves, and Allah loves those who purify themselves." And now onwards to Medina. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, when he arrives at Medina, he stays with his very distant cousin known as Abu Ayyub al Ansari. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam could have stayed with any companion. But he chose Abu Ayyub in particular because he was the only companion that he had close relations with. And this teaches us the importance of maintaining the ties of kinship. And now the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam begins building the masjid that we know as Masjid al-Nabawi. What's amazing is the Prophet of Allah, he establishes two masjids, two houses of Allah before he even begins building his own house. For most of us, owning a house is our life goal. Look to the example of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The masjid is a center of every community. And now that the masjid has been built, the Prophet ﷺ looks for a way that he can call the people to prayer. He gathers the companions and he asks for their opinions. One Sahabi says, O Messenger of Allah, why don't we use a bell? And another companion says, why don't we use a horn? But the Prophet ﷺ disliked both of these ideas because they resemble the Jews and the Christians. A companion by the name of Abdullah ibn Zayd al-Ansari, also known as Sahib al-Adhan. This conversation weighed heavily on his mind and as he sleeps, he has a dream. In the dream, he's searching for an instrument to use for the Adhan. And a man says to him, should I not inform you of something far greater? And then he teaches him the words of the Adhan. The next morning, Abdullah ibn Zayd goes to the Prophet sallallahu and tells him about his dream. He responds by saying, this dream is true. So teach your brother Bilal the words of the Adhan. Bilal was chosen to be the Mu'adhin, the person that calls to the prayer because he has a very loud and beautiful voice. This is the same Bilal that was dragged around the streets of Mecca. This is the same Bilal that was taken to the deserts of Mecca and tortured. Look how Allah elevates his status to become the official muaddin of the Prophet The next major incident that occurs, the scholars say that the hijrah now becomes wajib. Allah says, قَالُوا أَلَمْ تَكُنْ أَرْضُ اللَّهِ وَاسِعَةً فَتُهَاجِرُوا فِيهَا فَأُولَئِكَ مَأْوَاهُمْ جَهَنَّمْ وَسَاءَتْ مَصِيرًا Allah says, when the angels descend to the people that are dying, they will ask them, in what condition were you? And they will say, we were oppressed in the land. And the angels will say, was the earth of Allah not vast enough for you that you could migrate? And their boat is the hellfire. When this ayah that was spread to the Muslims of Mecca, who remained in Mecca due to extenuating circumstances, even though they may have been exempt from migration due to illness or old age, some of them still rushed to act on this verse. And this really highlights the significance of the Sahaba over us. When they hear an ayah, when they hear a command of Allah, they rush to act, which is in contrast to many of us who look for excuses or differences of opinions to satisfy our desires or our nafs. The next major incident that occurs is known as the Mu'akha. The Quranic name for the Muslims that migrated from Mecca to Medina is the Muhajirun, those that migrated. And the Quranic name for the people of Medina is the Ansar, the helpers. Allah says, لِلْفُقَرَاءِ الْمُهَاجِرِينَ الَّذِينَ أُخْرِجُوا مِنْ دِيَارِهِمْ وَأَمْوَالِهِمْ يَبْتَغُونَ فَضْلًا مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَرِضْوَانًا وَيَنْصُرُونَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ Allah described the Muhajirun as poor because they sacrificed their homes and their wealth when they migrated. So the Prophet ﷺ paired the Muhajirun with the Ansar. The Ansar housed the Muhajirun and they gave them work. 
but they went over and beyond. They wanted to give them their land and their wealth. But the Prophet ﷺ said no, as he didn't like taking handouts and the Muhajirun would work. Abdurrahman ibn Awf who was one of the very first people to accept Islam at the hands of Abu Bakr. He was a very wealthy man in Mecca. He was paired with Sa'ad ibn Rabi'ah, who was a very wealthy man in Medina. Sa'ad offered Abdurrahman much of his wealth and a home. For many of us, this is the dream, right? But not those that were trained by the Prophet Abdurrahman thanked Sa'ad for his generosity and made dua for him. And then he asked him to direct him to the market. And through buying and selling, Abdurrahman managed to amass another fortune. And now we come to the last and most important part of this episode, the constitution of Medina. The Prophet is now a leader, so he looks to establish some rules. There are three groups in Medina, the Muslims, the pagans and the Jews. The first rule that the Prophet ﷺ establishes is jurisprudential autonomy. Every group is free to determine the laws of its people. And also, every group will unite against injustice, even if it's a Muslim against a Kafir. When it comes to Islam, there is no favoritism or bias. We are united against injustice. And every group is to band together and support in war against Medina. And the last and the most important one is no group can support any other group, especially the Quraysh, against the Muslims. And remember this one in particular, because this will be the reason for many of the wars to come. Some reflections from this episode. Allah says, ikhwa. The Muslims are brothers. We are one family. And you don't always get along with your family, but you have love for each other, right? And the Prophet ﷺ expands upon this and says, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لأخيه ما يحب لنفسه. And look at the generosity of the Ansar. Allah says, يُثِيرُونَ عَلَى أَنفُسِهِمْ وَلَوْ كَانَ بِهِمْ خَاصَاصَةً. They preferred the Muhajirun over themselves, even if they themselves were poor. May Allah grant us the tawfiq and the ability to follow in the footsteps of the Sahaba. And that's all for this episode. See you in the next one. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. If you enjoyed this video, why don't you consider subscribing? Leave a like, comment down below, and share. Jazakumullah khair.